All right, this video is going to be on boom selection for the LTM 11209.1. <clears throat> um, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go into the uh, zip file for the mod. So you look here, and you'll have three PDFs. All of these come from Liebherr. You've got um, an overall uh, PDF, which has di uh, diagrams and, and some lift charts. You've got a brochure which basically goes over the features of the crane and then you also have load charts and these are specifically this shows all the different load charts and booms you can build for the ltm 11200. Um, we're first going to start off in this first one and as you can see we're going to scroll down quite a ways uh, to page 16. So page 16 is where it shows the different booms that you can build. Um, it does not take into account the length of these, of the lattice sections yet. Um, <clears throat> for the exact length of the lattice sections, you're going to want to go into uh, this load chart to show what you can actually do for each specific boom. Um, but you'll see here you have a T7 and you can look up at the top of these pages and it'll show you what that nomenclature means. So T7 is a telescopic boom with a hundred meter which is the seven section telescopic boom. This one you have T7F so you've got a telescopic seven section boom then you have a fixed or an NZF a hydraulic adjustable hydraulically adjustable jib. Okay then you have the T7Y. Y adds on the Y-shaped guiding system which are these arms off the back. Um, this one's T7YVE all right, and so VE is not on this page. So if you go down a couple, oh, here's VE, and so this is the telescopic boom extension that is six meters with the eccentric, and that is this little piece here, and that's where the Y guy system anchors to on lattice. All right, um, then you have a fixed jib or a hydraulic luffing jib. <clears throat> Uh, then you have this one, uh, VE, so you have the 6 meter with eccentric, then you have the V2, which V2 is here, so that's a 10 meter extension. <coughs> all right, and that's how all of these go. And so what you're going to want to do is, depending on what you're going to want to look at, what you're going to lift, how far away you're going to lift it, known as radius, and how high you have to lift it. Okay. Then what you're going to do is you're going to find the boom that will give you the best match for that okay so here we're going to open up the load charts <clears throat> so here you can see what uh, page each of those sections are on uh, so I'm, I'm reading in English and so I'll go to this section and see uh, which booms do best right um, so here you have uh, one of the load charts this is for the T7 in the upper right hand corner <clears throat> This uh, going down vertically, this is your radius and meter. So this is how far away from the center of the, of the superstructure you are going to be able to lift this weight. <clears throat> this across the top is the extension or the length of the boom that you are going to be using, right? Um, and so these all correspond. So this 100 meters is with a boom 100% extended for every single section using the T7, right? Um, then you have the weight and metric tons that you can lift at that radius. So at 16 meters, you can lift up to 168 metric tons. And 168 metric tons from 16 meters all the way in up against the crane. <clears throat> all right. And so basically, you're going to look at how much you're going to lift inside Farming Simulator. Um, and how far away you want to lift it and then you'll have to find that radius and then find the boom that matches typically you're going to want to find the simplest boom that has the capacity that way you have uh, less setup time all right um, <clears throat> checking my list to make sure good I think I covered everything hopefully that was nice and simple I do have other videos another video going over how to read lift charts if you need to go through that um, I'll try to remember to link that. Um, anyways, on to the next video.